every current generation gaming console has some kind of share button, but the Nintendo Switch has probably the least powerful recording features and no built-in streaming options. It's still possible to get good gameplay footage from your Switch, but it's going to take some more effort. Whether you wanted to make videos for yourself, your family and friends, or you wanted to dive into gaming content creation, I'm going to show you two easy ways to get started. The first method is free, and it's available to anyone with a Nintendo Switch, and it's simply using the built-in record feature to take 20 to 30 second clips of gameplay and then stitching them back together in your video editor to create one seamless take. You start by holding down the record button. This will create a 30 second video clip of your most recent gameplay. You want to do that for as many 20 to 30 second clips as you need to create your video. Then you'll go into your gallery and send over those video files to your phone or computer. You can use this QR code Wi-Fi transfer, or you can use an SD card to transfer multiple files at once. One of the downfalls of this method is that you'll be stuck in a 1280 by 720p video format regardless of whether you're docked or mobile. The benefit to recording your clips every 20 to 25 seconds is that the videos will only record the time from your last video recorded. So if you put these clips into a video editor back to back, there will be a seamless transition and it won't look like you made this video out of several smaller clips. The clip stitch method is great for beginners and it's fully free, but some of the problems are that you you can't stream, it's lower quality, and it could be a lot of work. The next method we're going to talk about involves using a simple HDMI to USB capture card. Now, the world of Nintendo Switch capture cards can seem a lot like the Wild West. There are so many options with weird brand names, listings disappear, they never have too many reviews. It's an uncomfortable place to be. But if you find a cheap capture card between $10 and $20 that says that it's USB 3.0, that means it can support up to 1080p at 60 frames, and the reviews aren't terrible, you could give it a shot. The way that they work is simple enough. You plug your HDMI cable that would normally go into your television into one side, and the other USB side you plug into your computer. Now that you have the USB input of the video and audio, you need a software to handle it. I would suggest downloading OBS Studio. It's a pretty standard streaming and recording software that most people use. There's also a Streamlabs version, which is more streaming oriented, but the things that we cover today should be the same in both. OBS is also completely free, which means that the only cost to this method is the cost of the capture card. The sources panel is what we're going to use to add in our video and audio capture from our USB 3.0 input. We'll start by clicking the little plus icon in the sources window and we'll select audio input capture. You can name this anything you want, it's for your reference, so I call it switch audio and click OK. From here, you just select your device. There should be one option for a built-in mic, and then you should see something like this. Mine says USB 3.0 capture. If you look at the audio mixer, you can see that audio is already coming in. Then you'll click on that plus icon again, and this time select video capture device. This I'm going to call switch video. Once you press OK, you can pick your device again, and USB 3.0 capture or something similar should be there again. It will automatically apply a preset on how it handles that USB input. You can change that here until it fits your scene. I'll show you in the preferences later how you can also change the details of your scenes. You can click the cog icon to go back into the settings of either your switch video or switch audio if you want to stray from the presets. In this menu, you can do things like change the FPS, maybe you want to reduce it if your computer is having trouble running it at the highest possible option, or to help your stream run a little bit more smoothly. You also have other things that you can adjust as you learn more about OBS and what these options actually mean, but the standard presets work pretty well. Now to actually hear your audio, you're going to have to turn on monitoring, and we'll get to that in a minute. You can see how it's actually pretty easy just to get up and running. We set up two sources. You'll want to go into preferences and click through these menus. The stream tab is where you'd go if you wanted to connect to a stream. You can connect your account or you can use a stream key that YouTube or Twitch provides you. In the output, you can select what kind of video files you want to record if you're just recording and what kind of video bitrate you want. In audio, you'll want to make sure that you have something proper selected for this monitoring setting. That's how you're going to hear your audio. There's also an advanced tab that we didn't go into that will let you select the dimensions of your scene and some other things. 
To hear your audio, you'll want to click on the small cog next to that input on the audio mixer, and then under audio monitoring, you'll want to switch this setting to monitoring and output. That means that you're going to be monitoring the audio of the input as you're playing the game. If you plug in headphones to your computer, this will let you listen to the audio from your Switch while also streaming or recording it. Once you have your sources and settings set up, it's as easy as pressing start recording or start streaming. Your stream will be run through that stream key or the account you provided, and the video recording will go to the destination that you selected in the preferences. This method is great if you want more control over your quality and you want to be able to stream and record longer videos, but there might be some audio and video lag based on your computer's performance. You'll notice that the more expensive cards, like the Elgato HD60 that most people swear by, have more cables attached to them. The way that it works is that you have an HDMI in, then you have a cable to your PC, but you also have another HDMI output to a second display. The purpose of that is so that you can have zero latency gameplay on that second monitor and just send the video input to your computer for recording and streaming only. This would be important for games with really quick inputs like fighting or action games where you need to press buttons and have very low latency to perform well. But if you're playing slower paced games that don't need it as much, you should be just fine with the simple HDMI to USB capture cards. If you have any questions, suggestions, or requests related to topics like this, leave them in the comments below.